just routed a bullet train directly to your office. It'll be here in 20 seconds unless you pick the PC that'll reroute the train in time. Will you choose the PC with Intel Pentium 3 or the one with the new AMD Athlon processor? Many people don't know there's a faster PC processor than Pentium 3 at any clock speed. The new AMD Athlon processor. Now you chose wrong, day. Too bad you didn't know about the new... Compared to Intel, AMD seems to be looked down upon by most of the PC community for a number of reasons, but I've never really looked at it the way others do. You see, when it comes to gaming, a PC really doesn't need an octa-core i7 overclocked to 5 gigahertz. It's just not needed. So naturally, being on a budget, the dirt-cheap quad-core Athlons being made in the recent years by AMD appeal highly to me for a number of reasons. I'll look at my Athlon X4845 as an example used in the PC I'll be showcasing in the video. The very PC I've used to make every single aspect of this video, and the PC I currently use every day. So I'm going to start off with the price, as it's the factor that stuck out most to me when I was in the market for a new CPU. Uh, so before buying a motherboard for my PC to begin the build, I looked on different online markets to find a CPU that was both within budget and obviously reasonably good performance-wise. So hearing all the magnificent things about Intel and having experience using Intel products in like previous computers, I went looking for a range of i3 CPUs across multiple generations uh, for one to fit my criteria, even peeking into some Pentiums and Core 2 quads, but none satisfied. So with great scepticism, I began the search on the AMD side of the spectrum of budget CPUs and found an abundance of adequate processors. There was a huge range of great value for money CPUs and there wasn't even a complicated mess of motherboard socket variations for every single CPU. So after a short period of time, I found the CPU I have now in my PC, the mighty AMD Athlon X4845. For only £40, I was able to get myself an A-series 3.5 slash 3.8 gigahertz quad-core CPU made in 2016 to fit a cheap as chips motherboard right from my PC. So now you know the CPU, it's time to add in the rest of this budget PC into the equation. As well as the Athlon, it uses 8GB of DDR3 RAM, the exceptional GTX 1050 Ti, the Ti making the 4GB of GDDR5 VRAM, and no SSD unfortunately, but a 1TB hard drive from Western Digital storing Windows 10. So let's get into the benchmarks. So to start off strong, Fortnite in 1080p on high settings uh, pulled a more than respectable minimum frame rate of 51 FPS, a maximum of 61, an average of 59. Really good results and a really good start for the Athlon. For the next benchmark, Warframe in 1080p high settings performed just as well with a minimum FPS of 55, a maximum of 64 and an average of 60 FPS. A very impressive performance for a really nice looking game. Tomb Raider 2013 in 1080p max settings proved to be a little bit more demanding for the CPU though, as although the highest and average frame rates were perfectly playable, the dips to 38 FPS could potentially worsen the game experience due to the cinematic and immersive nature of this game, but still a solid score. CSGO performed as expected for an older title, even in 1080p max settings, hitting a maximum frame rate of 86 FPS, although dipping to 42 in more hectic moments, but pulling a perfectly playable average of 67 FPS. H1Z1 also seemed to challenge the CPU again, dropping to 31 FPS on the medium settings in 1080p. The performance capped at around 50 FPS and kept a still playable 41 frames on average throughout the benchmark. Of course, Minecraft played spectacularly on 1080p high settings, with the chunks on 18, averaging at 60 FPS and not straying far from it most of the time, only dropping to 57 FPS. For some reason, my recorder wouldn't let me record Minecraft, so the gameplay you're seeing now is, is just the trailer. And last but not least, Skyrim at 1080p max settings was a pleasure to play, averaging 56 FPS, only dropping to 43, and capping off at 63 frames per second. So there we have it. Is a £40 Athlon CPU awful when it comes to games? No, of course not. Paired with the right graphics card, only the smallest amounts of bottlenecking were noticed, and most games were more than playable. So, are cheap AMD CPUs any good for a budget PC? Yes, absolutely go for it. Don't waste money on an overpriced i5 or i7 from Intel. Just spend more of that budget you saved on buying an AMD on a better graphics card. So thanks for watching everyone, leave a like if you enjoyed, and feel free to ask any questions below you have about this build or other builds that I can do. And I'll see you in the next video.